my screen. Uh, so I'm not going to share the window. Share. Yeah. Is everyone seeing the screen okay? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Oh, brilliant. OK, so I was just going to run through um, and tell you a bit about who we are um, and uh, who our service is for, then go into a bit more about the assessments that we do in the referral process and um, tell you uh, how our packages work. Um, so, and yeah, as I said, please jump in with any questions as I go along. Move on. So CINMAC uh, as a service has been around since 1968, so has quite a long history. Um, it first started by an OT who was really keen to provide um, uh, access to learning for those children with physical disabilities. So a lot of the first equipment that was put in place in 1968 was typewriters and adapted um, keyboards for the children to access for writing. Um, and then over the years, that's obviously developed into the technology and the service has been um, at the forefront in developing a um, uh, some of the first switch software and they used to have a whole technical department where they were making various uh, different switch um, adaptions and things like that. So um, and now we're quite a large um, multidisciplinary team but I'll tell you a bit more about who's in the team um, shortly. We're quite a unique um, person-centred service um, working with children from age 2 to 25 we're unique in the way that we we just working with assistive technology and that we loan the equipment um, for the students and um, I've got I'm just going to flick between the web our website and the presentation just to show you that on our website we've got oh why is that doing that <laughs> Um, we've got this little guide um, to when CINMAC comes to visit and it's actually quite a nice um, little booklet that talks about how we work and a nice way to share with young people um, about our service. I'm not going to go through it but it's I've got to Sorry, everyone, I don't know what happened. Did you catch the last bit of what I was saying? Oh, no. Could you go over that again? The guide. Yeah. So this is a little guide that we give to students when we're coming to visit them, um, but it's a nice little overview of the service. Um, here, so uh, I've just put the link so that you can um, come and look at that later. Um, so we carry out the assessments um, for assistive technology and I'm going to tell you a little bit more about that shortly. Um, and then we, for the students that are on our caseload, we do an annual review of their technology. Um, we train and support the team around and the families with the um, in the use of the technology, and we loan uh, the t the assistive technology. And that's mainly because often, um, as the child grows and develops through their education, their needs for the assistive technology might change. Also, obviously, the assistive technology changes rapidly, and the life of technology. Um, is often um, shorter than the life of a child through education. So it means we can swap and upgrade the equipment as needed or change it as their needs change. 
Um, another important aspect of our service is that we run an uh, annual event called Communication Works. Um, that's usually at Charlton Athletic Football Stadium here in London, very near um, Charlton Park Academy. And the main, um, the key, um, um, Sorry, the, the main emphasis of that event is to um, give everyone the opportunity to come and try out the, the whole range of assistive technology that is around for access to the curriculum and for communication. But um, mainly it's um, for young people to have an opportunity to share how they use their technology and um, to help sort of create the leaders and the, the um leaders of the future and the people who um, who are the key experts in actually using it and sharing their their um, the way that they use their technology um, so uh, that's really worth everyone who comes we get fantastic feedback from the day um, and gets a lot out of hearing about how the students in different schools are using the technology um, also the companies really enjoy uh, the day because they actually have young people coming around to their stands and trying out their technology and we really encourage schools to bring groups of students and um, teams of staff to to the event so there's a link there that um, uh, which is on our website. I'll just show you. We actually have in a tab about events and there's a link to the communication works and you'll see that uh, in 2024 it will be on the 6th of June at Charlton Athletic Football Stadium. Um, the technology that we provide is to access um, communication and or the curriculum. We work very holistically um, with the young person so we always involve um, the families and think about that technology not only in school but is, is it needed outside of school, um, do they need access for homework and also maybe thinking about uh, young people who have very limited physical ability it might be that they need technology um, to uh, access for you know social means and their social media and things like that so we would always look very holistically um, at uh, what their needs are we're a very um, uh, growing a multidisciplinary team so in our team we have advisory teachers and the teachers in our team uh, have backgrounds from uh, early years right through to further education um, and they also have a range of backgrounds between uh, special education and mainstream teaching so um, a wide range of skills within the team. Uh, the teachers have uh, various um, um, also other areas of expertise so some teachers will have uh, we've got um, Mary who's um, got a qualification in um, a QTVI uh -huh. and um, yeah, speaking. and other staff members that have got dyslexia training and various um, different areas um, for supporting assistive technology. We have um, a growing number of speech and language therapists uh, working with our students who require technology for communication and we have um, an OT, um, an occupational therapist that's helping um, with those children with more physical disability um, but he has a real uh, area of specialism in eye gaze and switching. We have specialist teaching assistants. We find that often it's around the confidence of the teaching assistants in the schools. So it really helps that we've got specialist teaching assistants in our teams that can go out and support your uh, teaching assistants in, in the schools. And then we've got quite a big technical team and um, administration support and um, someone helping uh, with our events and communication. That's um, so yeah, we are also an outreach service from Charlton Park Academy. So Charlton Park Academy is a very um, 
large special secondary school in Greenwich where our offices are based and um, Charlton Park Academy is known for its use of technologies and we work very closely with the school and often companies will provide us with technology, new technologies and innovations that we can um, pilot within the school. Um, so that is a bit about who we are. So who is our service for? Usually it's for those who have an EHCP plan, um, but we, and uh, the service is, is paid for through the local authorities mostly, um, and they tend to agree our input for those with EHCP plans. Although we do see some children who don't have an EHCP plan and that's um, agreed separately. So we always suggest that uh, if someone's going to make a referral that they check with their local authority or their key caseworker with the school to see whether it's worth putting in um, an application. Mainly we work with children and young people from 2 to 25, um, but uh, you know, we have got one or two students that we actually have seen past 25, but then that depends on um, funding as well through adult services. Um, we see children um, to support uh, their access to education and or communication, but as I explained before, it's a very holistic approach, so we work with the home and the family as well. We work across all provisions, so in mainstream, uh, SEN home, students who are home educated or maybe off school because of health reasons. Um, we support community-based provisions, colleges, nursery. Um, we work mainly in Greater London. We have had some um, very unique cases that have been outside of Greater London, but mainly it's within Greater London. And all our work is about helping children improve their independence, their motivation for learning, remove the barriers um, and, you know, support young people to, to reach their full potential. And that assistive technology is wide ranging. So the technology could be around communication, around supporting for mobility, hearing, vision, um, cognitive health reasons explained before. Um, we're always looking out for um, new technologies, trialing things, um, and you know, obviously, it's advancing um, a lot. So there's lots of new things that are, are coming out um, that um, we will often give to students to pilot and trial. Um, we, our way of working is also to support whole school inclusion, so looking at the universal design for learning and supporting schools, not only with um, the individual that we might be providing the equipment for, but um, whole school in terms of the assistive technology. So quite often when we've got students in schools, we will not only give the training to uh, the TA that's supporting the person in, but maybe it's a whole TA um, team, and to keep help keep schools up to date with some of the low, the accessibility functions that are coming out within Microsoft and Google and um, uh, Apple, sorry, yeah, and the different platforms. So um, all of our teachers are really um, keen to um, impact whole school as well as as the individual. Um, I'm just going to come on to our assessments and referrals. So uh, for our assessments, we use um, something called the SET framework that was um, designed by someone called Joy Sabala, who um, if you look online, there's lots and lots of information. And um, we often run training for Senkos and other teams on using this framework because it's very useful if you're thinking about um, a child who might be um, struggling or you feel like they're there's some other options that might work for the child, then this is a really useful framework. Um, I've put a link to a, a video there um, 
that um, explains it quite well. Um, but what the SEP framework does is look at the student first. So, um, you know, what is the student's strengths and abilities? What's working well? What's not working? And what's their aspirations and key motivations um, for um, it just generally? Um, and then we look at the environment and the support that's already available in, in place. And the environment can have one of the biggest impacts on the use of assistive technology. So, uh, you know, does the child uh, or young person, do they stay in one classroom or do they move around the building? Um, do they have one-to-one -one support or is that support shared? Um, What's the platforms within the school? Is it Microsoft? Is it Google? They all have an impact on the different types of technology that we might choose. Um, and then we look at what's the task that you're trying to achieve and what does the, the child want to do? Um, and also consider the EHCP um, outcomes and targets. Um, we always work with the multidisciplinary team within the school, so we would meet and discuss um, with other professionals, speech and language therapists, um, OT, um, anyone else who might be involved with the child and look at what their goals and aspirations are and how we can all work together and use the right technology to, to support the, ch the child to achieve. Um, also, it might be that there's already technology that's been tried um, and um, we would consider that. And then the last piece of the puzzle is what are the possible tools, the best tools that um, might help. And often um, that answer's not always um, firstly obvious and it might be that we need to trial some things and um, we often work with companies, they'll give short term trials and we'll support um, people to um, uh, have access to those things and it might be um, I worked with one um, student um, who she had a trial of a number of different eye gaze devices to work out which one she actually felt was best for her. Um, so we used the SEP framework um, for the assessments. So it made sense for us to then use the SEP framework as part of our referrals. So we now have um, our referral form um, in the format of, of the SEP framework. So I'm just going to um, jump to those pages on our website to show you where those resources are. Um, but first of all, just to explain, we have a number of local authorities that um, we have a number of students in relationships with. So if I just go here, you can see on our website, these are some of the local authorities that we um, work with mainly. And um, but they all have different processes in the way that the referrals um, are agreed. So for Southwark and for Wandsworth and for Merton, and you'll see this on our referral page, you need to go to the local authorities directly um, to ask and say that you would like to make a SENMAC referral, and then um, they will send you the paperwork. For the other local authorities, you can come straight to our website and make your referral from here. So if I just go to that page, um, you'll see an Annabelle who looks after all our media has made a very lovely page with some very helpful tips on here. Um, but you'll see the links here to our um, referral form. So I'm just gonna open that. Um, and so to begin with, um, it explains a bit about the SEP framework, so everyone's aware of why this form is written the way that it is. Um, also, we find it's absolutely key to the implementation of the assistive technology that um, there is a team around the child who is able to help support. So it's really um, great that right from referral stage that someone's identified as a key link and person that can um, work with us and coordinate that, that team. Um, also that all the other professionals 
who are involved with the young person um, are aware of the assessment. Um, we work quite closely with a lot of the other teams within the local authority. So like for Greenwich, we work with the STEPS team, um, the VI teams and the other um, support services that are coming into schools. So often uh, referrals are actually coming through them because we um, they're aware of us and, and what our service, what we're able to offer. Um, but if not, it's really good to inform them and to, because often we will want, um, and they would, would, would like to be part of the initial assessment and we'd do that jointly. Um, uh, there's also, we've created some visual resources for the students so that they can be part of this application form as well, so that the students are aware of what, um, of uh, us coming in and um, looking at assistive technology right from the beginning, if they're able to. Um, so you'll see here that the section one is all about the student, so the sort of key information. And then we've got some questions here that if possible, um, could be um, asked and completed with the young person. So what are their key strengths? What do they think they, their strengths are? What their interests are? are and um, what might um, help them to learn? What things does are key to helping them learn? Um, so you'll see here all these um, questions that relate to the child and then part the second um, section is all about the environment. So here um, it's really helpful if we've got the technician's details right from the beginning um, and we know a bit about the, the technology that's already used within the school um, here and um, contact details for other professionals and people that might be coming in to see um, the student. And then we've got section three, which is all about the tasks and the tools. So how that relates to the AHCP or other professionals, as I was explaining before um, here, um, uh, if there's anything that's already been trialed. And then we've got a checklist just of the other documents that would be useful to send in with uh, the referral form. If the referral form is just for assistive tech, not just, but for assistive technology to help the child access recording and um, the access to the curriculum, then you would fill in this um, first uh, part one. Um, you'll see on the website there is two forms, complete referral form one. Form two is for assistive tech technology and or for um, AAC, augmentative or alternative communication. And you'll see here that, oh, sorry, I thought I had the, we use um, an AAC framework that helps us understand what um, communication systems have already been used and what levels, the, what abilities the students currently have. Um, so this form here is asking for about their expressive skills, what paper-based and what power-based resources might be used. And here is um, some different um, 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 sorry, <laughs> uh, different statements that um, the team with the child, and it might be that um, parents might want to be involved with filling this in, um, that you would uh, tick here where you think the child is able to achieve or what they're able to do currently. Um, so you would um, go through this form here. This might be a bit confusing for people if you're not used to some of the terms and languages. So we are more than happy to help you fill in this form um, and to go over and discuss it um, with the team in the school. So please contact us um, if you'd like some support. One of the things that we're really um, keen to start doing is to start getting video evidence right from the referral stage. So um, if you're keen to do that, um, we have something we call the RICS wikis that we use. Um, there are secure online um, uh, sort of editable website that's all person-centered about the young person um, and we would really um, 
like to be able to set that up for, for someone that we could start getting some baseline video and then we can um, help schools collate video over time. And I just realised that I've really um, come to the, <laughs> it's nearly four o'clock. So uh, just uh, finally, just to let you know that our service works on in packages um, and the packages work on the cost of the equipment and the level of support that we need um, to give for the students. Um, and we do do assessment only and um, we would give schools a shopping list of equipment um, or we have ongoing support so that um, we're looking to review annually, um, provide any ongoing training um, and support to the, the schools and um, do whole school training and, and that sort of thing. So, sorry, I'm going to stop because there's a few minutes left and I just want to make sure that um, if anyone wants to ask any questions. Um, sorry, rush through. Was there any questions? Uh, I didn't see if there was anything in the chat. No. Okay. So how, um, could you tell me a little bit about the assessment, how long that would take and what, what the assessment um, was? So normally what we would do is be in contact with you prior to get a bit of inf bit more information about the student to find out like when's the best time, best time for the school and for the young person and how mm. long they might um, uh, tolerate you know sure. someone new coming in and um, yeah because it might be that it needs to be done over a period of time or that um, but r usually we would allow sort of an hour hour and a half um, to come into the school but it might be that you know the student's not able to cope with you know it might be a shorter sure. shorter period um, we would usually try and have conversations with the team around the child before we come uh, come in to meet meet the child we I mean part of having quite a thorough referral form is that you know we will bring different equipment into trial um, when we come in to see see the young person okay yeah thank you yeah yeah was there any other questions can't see no oh well thank you very much for joining thank you um and yeah i look forward to um meeting the students at adam or coming in because um i see another student in plumcroft so i'm i'm probably coming in with one of our speech and language therapists oh fantastic yeah that i'll be very in touch yeah thank you <laughs> yeah